Hi everybody, I'm Simon and this is Jam Chester 2017 which is the UK's biggest professional game jam where we get together over a weekend in Manchester and we have 40 hours for people to make video games so it's aimed at professional game developers and um, smaller companies and bigger companies who all get together to produce games and compete on a level playing field so here we have the winners of best company team who are Sig Trap Games who are based in Manchester VR specialist but didn't make a VR game this year it's your second winning category because you won a uh, best VR game last year didn't you so that was pretty good so um, I will go for Gary first because Gary's got the trophy so Gary what do you think about winning an award at Jamchester uh, absolutely like over the moon uh, yeah very 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 happy to receive this uh, <laughs> my brain's just gone to mush after after Emotional. all the, the jamming and the emotions and it just feels so nice to hold. Like these are so beautiful, and yeah, yeah. yeah thank well, you. Really, you really? I mean, it's not just your brain that's turned to mush. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's his emotional centre. It's yeah. disappeared as well. So, uh, Richard, you're a special guest, featuring Richard, the Killer Evans. <laughs> we found out Richard's got a, Richard's got a new nickname, which is lov lovely, the Killer. So, um, so well, first of all, how did you get the nickname, the Killer? Apparently it's from a movie I just learned because I didn't understand it <laughs> until about five minutes Which ago. Movie? I don't even know it's some Japanese movie. Oh, okay. Oh, right, The Killer, the movie The Killer. I don't know. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a movie called The Killer and there's another one called Ichi The Killer, so maybe it's one of those. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's yeah, yeah, does that make sense? Does he look like him? Or anyway, anyway, so anyway, well done. Um, but more importantly, you got a special mention for your audio because you're the audio designer and musician specialised in generative music. Uh, which there's a lot of in your game and it really came across and so um, yeah that was great so you know what how did you create the music what did you do for, to create the music in the game uh, well I mean it was really just reliant on the mechanics uh, I really couldn't do anything until we knew the art direction and mechanics of what the gameplay would be so I mean um, nothing was really driven by the music per se it was more so there were sort of goals or emotions we wanted to evoke in the player sort of the mechanics of how the music was generative just relied on that so you're doing a phd in generative music or interactive music yeah interactive music for video games particularly so do you think you um, managed to learn anything extra this weekend or you, have you come up with any new ideas um, definitely working with Luke on the programming side, just sort of working sort of in person in like a very short time span to actually implement the audio and get it working with no real sort of retakes or editing of anything was definitely helpful. So. Excellent. So Luke, you're the programmer on the team. And um, so first of all, what technology did you use and uh, how did you implement that technology? So, I mean, uh, you know, at the base we're using Unity, and we, we tend to use Unity. Uh, it kind of fits with our sort of workflow. We're very iterative. We kind of throw things together quickly, see if it works, and kind of iterate on that based on what we sort of found out. And Unity works really nicely with that. So the kind of the, the, the fun thing with this, obviously, was, was kind of that dynamic music system. Uh, and rather than kind of using any middleware or anything, we actually did that all in Unity's uh, built-in audio system uh, and again like the way unity works really sort of works nicely with that because you can sort of combine behaviors by adding components to game objects and all that sort of stuff so you can kind of come up with some behaviors that do interesting things and then put them together and you kind of get these emergent behaviors that you can very quickly build up a tool set and get some really cool stuff out of it so that was really helpful in terms of sort of building up you know Richard's work into the the layers that, that we ended up having and that ends up being sort of dependent on certain in-game variables so we kind of look at how close you know the player is to an enemy and there's sort of different there's different there's two different classes of player so there's different variables for how close you are to this kind of player and how close you are to this kind of player so we have a whole bunch of layers that all act on sort of you know one variable but then when you put that all together you've got five different layers that act on five different variables so you've got a complete sort of you know a smorgasbord of different combinations depending on what exactly is happening in the game at any one time so it comes up you know it ends up with this really interactive dynamic system that's kind of I mean it's a cliche but more than some of its parts it sounds like we should get you to write a blog post about it and then get it featured on the unity website because that's the sort of thing that people you know how do you use basic unity systems without having to like get a third-party system 
you know, if you've done it all within the engine, that's pretty exciting because you've not got to pay for another system or learn a new system. So that's pretty exciting. So, well, I, I think you'd write a blog post about it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, my other question, and I'll carry on with you, Gary, um, oh wait, Luke. Sorry, is um, so you guys are famous for making VR games. You've made a lot of VR games and Sub Lover Zeros got a VR. Um, uh, update coming, I think yes. July the fourteenth, thirteenth, July the thirteenth. So sub level zero, in the <laughs> in the Steam sale right now. Um, that's sub level zero. Um, so that's VR, uh, and you won. You guys won. Uh, you two won the best uh, use of VR at Jamchester two thousand and sixteen. Why did you decide not to do VR this year? Well, honestly, we've been doing a lot of VR lately, and we kind of. One of, one of the reasons we do game jams, and we do a lot of game jams, and not as many as we'd like actually, uh, but one of the big reasons we do it is to kind of take a break and refresh ourselves and do something different, you know. Um, that, it, that a game jam is really great at giving you that whole production process in a compressed period of time. So you're sort of completely separating from pretty much all of your everyday life except showering. Um, and like you know, in that time, you can focus on something new and just completely shut out, shut out everything else. Try something that you wouldn't try otherwise. Be really experimental with it. And you know, in that vein, it kind of occurred to us that we've been doing so much on VR lately that actually it would be really nice to do something that wasn't VR and sort of break out of that. Yeah. So if you're not a VR company, do VR. If you are a VR company, do something completely exactly. different. It's, it's the perfect. Option. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Gary, question for you. Yeah. So your game. Yeah. Where were you on Friday and Saturday? Because no one saw anything. It's just there was nothing to see on Friday and Saturday and Sunday morning. And then suddenly, like, one minute to 12, bang, there's an entire graphics uh, set up in there. So, uh, yeah, where have you been for the last uh, two and a half days? I mean, so I've, I've been around, but I, I, I had a pretty significant, like, mental block at the start of this. Um, and I kind of felt like I need to get a little bit of fresh air, just sort of refresh myself, go off site for a little bit. Um, and then I sort of come back and it was like, right, okay. Um, found a bunch of like useful references and stuff in sort of the visual direction. Uh, but yeah, mostly it was just like a big art block that I, I could not get over for like the first day and a half. But you got over it and you won a trophy, so that's pretty amazing. What's the name of the game? And give us a quick, so we need to crack on, but what's the, give us a quick description of the game. Uh, I'll, I'll pass that on to Luke. Oh. Uh, only, be, only because I I tend to like say... You could draw a picture of the game. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Luke, what's the name of the game? And quick description. I'm not sure quick is, is uh, possible. No, quick, okay, quick. so the name of the game is Synchroside. The idea of the game is you uh, it's a two-player local multiplayer game where you both use the same controller. And not only do you both use the same controller, you both control two characters. So you use a thumbstick and a D-pad or the face buttons to control two different characters. And you're trying to catch the past version of the other player and their future version is trying to catch the past version of you. So you're essentially stopping their future from existing by catching their past uh, and the two players are actually parallel universe opposites of each other so we came up with this word synchroside in that you are sort of killing your parallel opposite being so the best thing to do really viewers is watch the video because it's a bit of a mind the, I, the description is a bit of a... I'm trying not to swear. <laughs> I mind you know what. Um, so, yeah, watch the video. There's some beautiful artwork from Gary. And <laughs> if you're going to watch the video, make sure you've got the sound turned on because they've got a special mention for sound design. So thanks very much uh, uh, to Sigtrap, who have finally got the trophy <laughs> that they really wanted. So uh, well done, Sigtrap. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.